This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2237, Four Things Simplifying Has Taught Me About Gratitude by Lisa Aveyon with simplyfiercely.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator. And we're gonna jump right into today's post as we optimize your life. Four Things Simplifying Has Taught Me About Gratitude by Lisa Aveyon with simplyfiercely.com. Starting out, I didn't expect gratitude to become a large part of my simplifying message. I was focused on getting rid of clutter and saying no to more events and saying yes to my family and self-care. I wanted a simple life in which I could enjoy more space, more time, more money, and more experiences. It's pretty close to what I'd guess most want when simplifying life. I just didn't count on what would come next. Sometimes, Simplifying gets messy. There's a hard truth about simple living. It's not always simple. It's making difficult decisions and protecting what's most important when those around you might not understand. In those early months, I wasn't sure if it was worth it. Was the negative space in my life going to produce something of value? Would my kids miss out of something? Is taking so much out of our lives traumatizing them in some deep psychological way? I'm happy to report that I don't worry about those things much anymore. In fact, I can deny that any of those concerns are valid because what started welling up in my soul soon after those doubts was a gratitude that seemed new somehow, like I had tapped into a new well of thanksgiving which transformed how I viewed my new, simple life. Letting go of so many things, physical and emotional, laid bare the things I cared for most. You see, simplifying life cuts everything except what truly brings love, joy, and life so that we can appreciate them for everything they were meant to be. Not for sitting pretty on the shelf, not for drawing O's and O's out of our friends, not for filling the holes of a broken heart, but for true beauty and light. This is where gratitude begins. In my own journey of simplifying, I've learned the shortest path to simplicity is gratitude. Simple will inspire gratitude every time, every day. Here are four things simplifying has taught me about gratitude. Number one, it's hard to run out of things to be grateful for. As we turn our hearts toward gratitude, our eyes adjust to the reality of the beauty around us. That sunset becomes the most beautiful of your life every single time. The taste of those homegrown tomatoes the best you've ever tasted every single time. The way my baby girl's face lights up when I walk in her room at dawn, ah, I can't handle it every single time. Gratitude is how joy enters your soul and rises like the steam from your morning coffee, which by the way, is the best cup of coffee you've ever had every single morning. Number two, it's easy to be the most positive person in the room. What would your life look like if you really lived with a heart turned toward gratitude? I believe you'd be the most positive person in most of the rooms you walk into. Because to see the world with the eyes of gratitude is to see the goodness, kindness, and beauty above all the things that keep everyone else preoccupied. There is no judgment or comparison in gratitude. No reason to criticize or gossip. Light up every room with gratitude and you can change the atmosphere entirely. Number three, true gratitude is followed by action. Being grateful can transform your inner life in unexpected ways, but I believe that true gratitude compels us to do something. The most generous people I've met and known always carry with them an abundance of gratitude. And the more generous they are, the more gratitude they exude, not to mention the gratitude they are inspiring in the people receiving the gift. And number four, the best gratitude isn't for things. The more stuff I get rid of, the more grateful I am. I'm very grateful for the physical things I own, the necessities and the unnecessities, but oh, how my heart overflows for the intangible. The laughter of my husband and kids, the tender hug of a friend when my heart aches, the beautiful words I hear when my parents tell me they are proud of me. The soul of simple living rests in knowing that our things can be taken from our hands, but our joy and love and gratitude can never be taken from our hearts. I'm learning that to live simply is to live in gratitude. 
And with gratitude as my compass, I know that wherever this simple life takes me, I will be okay. You just listened to the post titled Four Things Simplifying Has Taught Me About Gratitude by Lisa Aveon with simplyfiercely.com. Now, working at a startup is unimaginably hard, but having one spot to organize everything and work as a team makes it much easier. That's what we've realized here at OLD. All your notes, documents, projects, processes, tasks, don't you wish there was a way to pull them all together? Notion is an all-in-one team collaboration tool that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and much more into one space that's simple, powerful, and beautifully designed. It's seriously the only place that's stuck for us for online collaboration of notes and processes. Really glad we found Notion here at the Optimal Living Daily team. For startups, Notion can provide a full-on operating system for running every aspect of your company, keeping everyone aligned as you grow fast and take on more. Interested? Want to find out more? Notion is running a special offer just for startups. Get up to $1,000 off Notion's team plan by going to notion.com slash startups. To give you a sense, that's almost a year of free Notion for a team of 10. Again, that's notion.com slash startups to receive up to $1,000 in free credit to use Notion with your team. That's up to a $1,000 value when you go to notion.com slash startups. Thank you to Lisa. I did one of the popular gratitude books that was greatly reviewed. I managed to do it every single night for however many pages it is, I don't remember. But I'd be surprised if it was less than six months. The first thing I'll say is that I don't recommend the book. And hear me out on this. The idea of the book is fine. Gratitude journals or gratitude in general has been proven to help our moods and outlook. That's great. But the book itself, I'm not so sure that investment was worth it. Every page is the same except the quote at the top. I don't know, I guess I expected a bit more when buying a book. I believe it was three prompts, the same prompts every day. So I really should have just written in a notebook or even in an app. For this kind of stuff, I do prefer writing, so a notebook would do, and that's a very small investment for something quite powerful. So when I was doing it daily, or nightly, I should say, as Lisa said in number one, you don't really run out of things to be grateful for. You can go from simply grateful for being alive to the pen you're writing with. Basically, every object in your home, you should be grateful for, right? But also, as she said, it's not about things necessarily but the things we can't touch too. Positive thoughts, memories, abilities, you name it. It really never ends. We just have to think outside of the box sometimes. It's not a tough challenge, but if you have it in you and can remember to do it, try even just thinking about one thing you're grateful for before going to bed tonight and see if you can remember to do it tomorrow too. A little gratitude really does go a long way. And of course, I'm grateful for you being here. I talked about that enough in the ending of yesterday's episode, so I'll leave it there. Have a great rest of your day and night. Don't forget about my little gratitude challenge to you. And I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.